Hey everybody, it's Tyler Binkley here and we are looking at Swift Playgrounds Branch Out. And if I take a look at the uh, table of contents, this is in the four loops chapter of the Learn to Code One section of uh, Playground in Swift Playgrounds. So looking at the map, okay, it looks like we got three rows that are exactly the same. And if I read the challenge on the left, it says decompose repeating patterns into functions and for loops. You've learned about the basics of coding and you've solved a lot of puzzles with your character. Now that you know about commands, functions, and for loops, you're ready to combine your skills for this chapter. There are three stairways in the puzzle world and each shares the same set of tasks to perform. Can you figure out the pattern for the tasks and write the code? So I mean, automatically, I feel like, okay, obviously, I think it's pretty easy to see that there's three rows that are exactly the same. And I think the next thing to point out is, you know, where, where byte is currently standing, if there were a row right there, like right there where he's standing, well, you know, when I think about looping, right, like these are all, the stairs are all evenly spaced out. So like that's going to be important when it comes to my loop and, and how I can try to save myself time with, uh, with a loop so that we don't have to write so much code because this would be a lot of coding if we didn't have loops and functions and things like that. So if I switch back to Swift, okay, I know right away I want to try a loop. And so I'm going to just go with it right away. I'm going to start with the four. Now, I think the number to try first is, of course, a three because there's three rows exactly the same, right? And so, you know, if I go into the code box, now remember, I'm standing right where a row could have been, but it's not. So, you know, if I were to finish a row, like this is where I would be at. So I, I need to move forward and just think, okay, I'm moving forward twice, two tiles there to get to the first set of stairs. And um, now I just need to keep going. So I would turn right and then I would, let's see, move forward, move forward. I'm trying to count these tiles here. Maybe it's easier if I switch over here. Let's go. Um, this would be one, two, three, up the stairs, four, five, six, seven. So I think I need to do seven move forwards. One, two, three, right there, four, five, six, seven. And then that's a switch. So we want to toggle the switch. And then I'm going to have to turn around, right? So turn around, which would be two left hand turns or two right hand turns. And I have to come back. Now, here's the thing. I mean, there's a bunch of spaces. And I easily could have maybe set up a function and just said, hey, you know what? Move forward if there's nothing there, right? I could have set up a function or uh, a little conditional code, which we will get to. And that's, that's a little ahead of the game. Let's see how many I got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, I'm at the, I would be back to the beginning. So now I need to turn. If I'm facing this way, I need to turn to the right. And then that should be it, right? Because I already put in the move forward to get to the next row. And so, I mean, I just want to try running this and, and see what happens and see if I made any mistakes. See how we do with that first row. Okay, so he's going down the seven steps, toggled it, coming back. Let's see if I did that right. Okay, all right. And now it's starting to repeat the second time. And if we do the step through my code, which slows it down, you know, we can see, okay, we, we did all of these sections, right? Okay, he's, he did his turnaround, his 180 degree turnaround. Now he's moving forward all seven times again, back to the beginning of the row. And now we're turning right just to get set. And now look, it's repeating it one more time because I said three total. And so it's going to just hustle down to the end here. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. Whoops. And, you know, now that we know that it did the first two rows, right, we know it's going to do this last row correctly as well. And there you go. And um, just by doing a loop three times, I mean, you can imagine that's, that's a lot of coding right there or pretty many lines compared to even the last section. So to loop that three times and not have to do it all over again two more times, that's the benefit of loops. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this. I hope it helped. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Thank you.